Is there any public comments before we get started? Okay. Um, then we'll jump to item number three, PC 19-148, HR 19 07 for an alteration of previously approved new construction of the McLaughlin Conservation District at 415 Center Street. So this is a, actually a public hearing, quasi-judicial, so we have to do the whole spiel. Yeah, so I can start that now. Sure. Um, Not letting me sign in. Oh, Claire. Okay. I'll click on that. Number HR 19-07, public hearing on land use applications is scheduled tonight. A staff report has been prepared for each application has been made available to the public seven days before the first public hearing. The staff report identifies the approval criteria that apply to each applicant's proposal. Staff has analyzed the criteria which are contained in the staff report. A quasi-judicial hearing procedure that the commission will follow set out in the state law and the Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing procedure steps are shown on the chart. Anyone wishing to speak should fill out a speaker's card and give it to the planning staff before the hearing. Speakers will proceed in the order in which the card is received. You should fill out your address on the card so that the city will notify you of its final decision. For the public record, please begin all testimony stating your name. Testimony and evidence should be directed toward the applicable approved criteria. If you believe other criteria apply in addition to those addressed in the staff report, identify and discuss those criteria and explain how and why you believe they apply to the application under consideration consideration. A person may submit any written material while the public record is open on each application. Any written material received by the city staff during the time period in which the record is open will be placed in the record. Written material submitted during the public hearing must be presented to the city staff in order to become part of the record. If a person attends for PowerPoint presentations, oversized poster boards, reports, pictures, or other exhibits used in their oral testimony placed in the record, copies must be submitted to the city staff while the record is open. If they're not given to staff, they will not be included in the record. Any person wishing a continuance to present additional evidence and testimony or to keep the record open to respond to new evidence must make that request before the public testimony portion of the hearing is closed. If the Historic Review Board makes a decision which you disagree, any issue that you may wish to appeal must have been raised for the consideration of the City Commission or LUBA or both without raising the issue on the record with sufficient specificity and accompanied by statements or evidence that the City and all parties can respond. The issue will not be deemed appealable to the State Land Use Board of Appeals. In addition, the failure of an applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Now we will open the record for Oregon City file PC 19-146 HR 1907. A request for an alteration of previously approved new construction of McLaughlin Conservation District at 415 Center Street. Does any commissioner have any ex parte contacts, conflicts, or interest bias, or any other statements to declare? No. 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 Has any commissioner visited the site? Yes. 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 Okay. For the record, we have all visited the site. Does anyone in the audience wish to question any of the commissioners about these disclosures? Okay. So now we'll. Oh, I will say, for public hearing processes for land use items, the staff will provide a report. Public testimony, 15 minutes for the applicant, five minutes for representatives of a recognized neighborhood association, government agency, or other incorporated public interest organization, three minutes for individuals, five minutes for applicants rebuttal. So now um, we'll commence with the planning staff report. Thank you, Chair McLaughlin. Okay, um, and so this, uh, the building in question at 415 Center Street uh, is an office building approved through HR 1708 uh, by the Historic Review Board in 2017. Uh, and the applicant recently um, 
finished construction of the building and requested final inspections and a certificate of occupancy from the city uh, building department and planning departments. Uh, and upon the inspection, we noted that um, one of the conditions of approval for smooth hardy plank siding um, was not met and instead the uh, textured wood grain hardy plank siding was um, on the building, on the first story of the building. Um, so the applicant, um, we uh, could not issue a final certificate of occupancy um, at the time and uh, the applicant um, had the options to go ahead and change the siding at, uh, in order to get the final certificate of occupancy or um, to go back to the board and request that chain, a change to that condition of approval to allow the siding that is currently on the building. Um, so the applicant opted to request, uh, make the request to the board. Um, and so he, this is the original submission um, in the drawings uh, from 2017, the um, applicant indicated just hardy plank lap siding. Um, but then in the narrative uh, portion of the application, um, it uh, specifically proposes to use smooth finish hardy panel siding at the main level to replicate cedar lap siding. Um, and then in addition to that, conditions of approval, um, the board, uh, emphasized the use of 4B would or a minimum four to six inch reveal smooth composite siding be utilized. Um, I'll talk about that number five condition uh, in a minute. Um, so here's a picture of the finished building. Um, you can see the, the second floor is um, uh, uh, the shake siding and the first floor is the horizontal board siding and it has the textured finish. So this uh, second story has smooth um, shake siding, which is what was proposed. Um, so as far as the product offerings, I just wanted to uh, show those who maybe weren't aware of the different textures that are offered for this product. Um, so there's, it, it's actually referred to as cedar mill as a textured uh, product and then um, the smooth product. And then I also have some comparisons. Um, so the brown here, tan color is uh, what's used on the building and that's the cedar mill textured wood grain uh, siding. And then above is what the smooth siding looks like. Um, and then over here I have actual wood siding, um, kind of one that looks a little bit smoother, probably because it might have multiple layers of paint or it's just sanded down more. Um, and then one that's a little bit more rough um, and has more texture to it. Um, there are, I will note, there were three public comments that came in. I do have hard copies of everything up here if anyone wants a copy uh, of those, but they didn't come in in time to make it onto the published agenda. Um, so those are available and um, the board has reviewed all of those already um, over email. Uh, so staff's recommendation, um, so a little bit of history on why the board requires smooth siding. Uh, the design guidelines for new construction say that wood siding or materials which have the appearance of horizontal wood siding uh, are permitted. There is no specific prohibition in the design guidelines against the textured cedar mill composite siding. Um, how, that being said, for the, at least the last 15 years, uh, as far as any current staff here can remember, the board has always required smooth siding for new construction in the historic districts. Um, Staff's recommendation is uh, to retain the original condition of approval because purportedly there was a reason for it in the first place. Um, that smooth does have the appearance of wood, um, unlike the actual textured siding, which tries to look like wood grain, but 
maybe doesn't, um, in many opinions, do that. Uh, so um, in addition to the recommendation, I would just say that if the board thinks that the textured siding is also appropriate and has the appearance of wood and uh, meets the design guidelines, then um, it would be, uh, that would be something that would probably cause us in the future to not require any other new construction to use smooth hardy plank. Um, so you'd kind of be setting a precedent saying, if this textured siding is appropriate and meets the guidelines, um, then any future new construction in the historic districts um, could use it. Um, if, so, if the board thinks that it's not appropriate, doesn't meet the design guidelines, and wants to retain that original condition of approval, then uh, the applicant would uh, be required to replace the siding on the first story of the building, um, and the board could give, uh, you know, give a time frame or a deadline for that. Um, and then, if the board thinks it is appropriate, then the, the siding could stay, and um, probably future construction we would want to rethink you know, having conditions about the type of siding. Um, okay, so moving on, just because this came up today, someone uh, pointed out that there was also a condition of approval for number five, the dimensions of the columns. Um, so there are seven columns that are on the front, wrap around the side, um, front porch on the building. And I believe those appeared to be in the drawings six inches wide. And the board required them to be increased to 8 to 10 inches in width. Um, it does not appear that that condition is met uh, either. So um, just wanted to bring that up because that is another item that the applicant will have to um, address in order to uh, get a final certificate of occupancy. And I have, I believe I have uh, photos of the columns. They're not great, um, so I wasn't necessarily trying to photograph the columns at the time. But um, so this one, uh, there are three on the front along Center Street, uh, one here in the corner, and then another three down along the side of the building. Uh, so that concludes my staff report. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we can move on to public testimony if the applicant would like to come forward and state their name. My name is Bill Winkenbaugh. Okay. Do you want to... Uh, okay. Give us your spiel. Give okay, us. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I've taken pictures of numerous homes within the historic district that are actually um, stated as historic buildings, meaning I took my computer, I opened up to the property addresses that are specific historic review designated um, buildings and I've taken pictures of them, and there is so much hardy texture that is on historic buildings right now that um, I'd like you to see that. I have three copies of this. Um, are you guys able to take two and let me have one, and maybe you guys can share a little bit? I We're flexible. So. Sure. Yeah. I can, or go ahead. You need one for the file. Maybe you can have one. You can have these ones. I would, I'd like to start by just going through these and explaining them to you a little bit. So on the first one that you're looking at, that is in fact the 415 Center Street building. And that is in fact the Hardy siding that is on it. Um, the second picture is 419 Center Street. That is the adjacent property. 419 Center Street is a designated historic review property and it does have real wood. But when you look at the real wood and you look at the hardy, um, the textures are, are pretty darn close. It's not horribly different. Okay. When you look at the third page, you see the two buildings next to each other. And from, from that distance, I'm taking this at night, but I'm, 
uh, I was looking at during the day, you can't tell the difference. I mean, you can't stand back and go, oh my God, he put textured, textured siding on that. If you look at the fourth picture um, at 111 6th Street, there's new construction, which is clearly within the historic um, district, and it has um, textured hardy siding on it. Um, it's a distance away and didn't feel comfortable walking up to their home, but I brought my binoculars and I could see that it was most definitely textured hardy siding. The next picture is at 902 6th Street, and I'm sure you guys can go and look and see that these are truly historic um, sites. Um, it is not hardy, but it is a lap siding, a textured lap siding. If you look at 118 um, John Quincy, that again is real, um, channel. real wood, but again, it looks very similar to the textured siding. Um, 804 John Quincy is um, text, the second page of that is um, textured um, T111. 226 Monroe is textured T111. On 8th Street, there are four brand new buildings, clearly within historic review. Most definitely, as you look at the next picture over, they have Hardy plank on them. So there's brand new construction with Hardy. Again, if you take a look at the next page, you are at 811 Monroe. It has Hardy on it. It is a designated historic building. I took several pictures because when I got back, I wasn't sure if my first pictures clearly designated it or indicated it was. And as you flip through the pictures, you can see it is a texture siding. It certainly doesn't look as good as my cedar mill. When you go to um, 1002 Monroe, it is um, real wood. But I still wanted you to see the, the second page of that, the picture of the real wood, it's hard to distinguish between the hardy and the real wood. If you go to 1106 Monroe, um, that is a designated historic building. That is textured hardy. Um, 1118 Monroe, textured hardy, designated historic review. Um, 1321 um, LP siding. Um, and I think that really is T111. I think that my, I'm, I miswrote that one. And then the last one is 612 12th Street, and it is real wood, but it looks darn close to the textured siding that I used. So my first, you know, beginning of my presentation is just I wanted you to see, see that. And I also want to point out that you're in a building, this building. I did this. This is my building. I took the old McLean Clinic. I tore it down. I'm the one that rebuilt this. And so this is my work. And it has textured hardy siding on it. So <clears throat> textured hardy, hardy siding isn't something so remote that it's just not in existence. It is in existence. It is throughout your historic district. And I'm not even counting the buildings that are in between the buildings. They're designated historic buildings that have hardy siding. There are so many of those, I would fill a book with the number. There's historic buildings throughout this area that have the textured siding, and my textured siding is the newer one that looks superior to it. I would not be stand out as an exception. Oh my God, they let this one person do it. So I, I have written some notes down here, and I'm not a public speaker, so if you'll um, excuse me, and I'm just going to kind of go through my points of interest that I'd like to bring up. Um, there's there's Hardy throughout the historic area designated building, non-designated buildings, um, and on new construction. So I've, I've seen at least six brand new construction in historic area here that have the textured siding on them. Um, the, the new, especially the, the cedar mill, the texture on it emulates the natural wood as I demonstrated in the pictures that I've shown you. It, it's close enough that the building right next to my building on 415, if you look closely at them, the textures look almost almost the same. At, at a very small distance, you can't even tell that it has texture. And yes, of course, if you take a picture of the right light, you can get it. But if you're driving or walking down the sidewalk, it doesn't scream at you. I want to 
point out that, you know, we had a write-up that we did two and a half years ago that, that um, did have um, mention of smooth, hardy siding. But then we subsequently had the plans drawn, submitted, and approved. And on those, those plans, it calls out for areas where we have smooth hardy, and it calls out areas where there is you know, regular hardy. We followed the plans. The plans, if you look at the plans, they say smooth hardy. We put smooth hardy where it says smooth hardy. You look at the plans where it says lap, it doesn't say smooth. Yes, there's something that was in writing you know, two and a half years ago that is probably in a file somewhere. We, we did not catch it. We, we made a mistake. We, we didn't see that we had something in a submittal that some employee two and a half years ago put in, but our plans call for specific areas to specifically ask for smooth, and we put smooth. In the other areas, it, it didn't. And so, um, again, knowing that I built City Hall with texture siding, I did not have a red flag going off, and oh my God. But as we were building this building, we were, we were so careful, so thoughtful, and so trying to be a good steward that we did things that were far and above what were called out on our plans. We put a $5,000 front door on that is stunning, it's beautiful, and it matches some of the nicer historic buildings that you have. We made certain that we came up and got approval from the Historic Review Committee to be sure that we could enhance the door from the 6-8 door with the transom to a very expensive eight-foot door with leaded glass that's super beautiful. We were trying to follow the rules. We weren't out there being rogue, just doing our own thing. We were following the plans, we were checking with historic review, and we were trying to be a good steward. There is textured siding throughout your historic area. This is not an exception. And yes, you probably should go ahead and allow textured siding because you have it everywhere and it looks just like the real wood as it matures and, and the grain is exhibited. You know, when, when we're building in, in historic re review area, it seems that if this um, kind of thing is going to happen, which it does, because I've built in here enough times, there needs to be better coordination between the building department and the historic review with respect to specification, specificity. Um, you know, we should be having in the historic area, as all the other new construction that has gotten away with apparent um, textured hardy siding in your historic area, checkpoints that are the same as other um, inspection phases. It, it, if this was going to be an issue, it should have been brought up at the framing stage. Oh my God, you put on the wrong siding. And maybe even the, the inspector would have noticed as he was doing um, my cover inspection or something that we were using it and, and caught us in time. But there, there isn't anything said about it along the way. We had a historic building that we built that we finished, it was beautiful, and the the railing we put up was not not good. They didn't, the historic review didn't accept it. There wasn't details, but they didn't like it. So I, being a good steward, I tore it down and redid it. And I did it with a picture and drawings, and then it still wasn't liked, and so I did it a third time. I've not been someone who has been uncaring to historic review specifications and the intent of what we're trying to achieve here. I've, I've been a good steward, and I believe I was in this instance as well. Um, if I was the only one that did it in your area, I would concede that, you know, let's go, I would have probably just torn it off without asking you. And I already offered to tear it off. And I was suggested that I come before you because it seems fair. And so I'm being a good steward, I'm being fair, I'm doing everything I can to be right. And making me tear that off, I think would be, um, wouldn't be right. So, um, you know, it was mentioned about our precedents. The precedents are been set dozens and dozens of times. Going to the other one issue on the columns, um, another thing that was in a write-up from two and a half years ago, we killed ourselves in those columns. We had like three different columns sent out trying to get the biggest ones we could and get ones tall enough to fit our building. I mean, we have three times sent them back. 
those columns are the biggest you can buy on the market, short of my taking something and planing it down. Yes, of course, I could go to a woodsmith and have him turn something for me. But my goodness, guys, I've got beautiful, expensive fiberglass columns that are very close to the dimension you're looking for. They're beautiful, they're gonna stand the test of time. To, to force someone to get a wood product that is going to dilapidate over, over the years to get an extra couple inches seems a, a bit extreme to me. Is there any questions that you'd like to ask of me? And by the way, thank you guys so much for meeting early. I mean, it was super kind of you, and I know this was not normal, and I respect and appreciate the fact that you did that. Anybody have any questions? Uh, do you have a financial estimate on the cost of making the, or removing the siding, replacing it with smooth and repainting and? Probably $12,000. But it's, it's more than that to me. It's, it's more than just the $12,000. It means that I can't close on a building that I'm desperately to close on. And I've been really in a huge fight with the person who bought the building. And they found out from Historic Review and they wouldn't even accept. Historic Review was so kind, um, or the planning department, to give me a full certificate of occupancy. I have a, a full, not conditional certificate of occupancy as a kindness to me because maybe they felt I had a chance and my buyer wouldn't, it wouldn't accept it. Um, they knew that I was gonna have this meeting, so they're not closing till I have this meeting, so it, it means more to me than just removing it. Are there any other questions? One, one th I don't know if my, yeah, it's mine. Um, one thing, the, you know, you said that the, the siding is the same as next door. A lot of- It's, it's it, not the same, it just no, looks, it looks, looks the same. Looks right, the same. right, right. The house next door is totally a different type of architectural, um, the style of building. Of course. And it is more, a rougher um, siding would probably be more appropriate because it's a, you know, um, my brain, bungalow? Uh, bung well, bungalow, right? But um, and the other, there's you know other buildings that might you know pull the same thing where it's the style of the the house. It's more appropriate to have a rougher style um, siding on it than others. So just because you find the wood siding, you know, um, around the. Um, um, McLaughlin neighborhood doesn't mean that it's appropriate because usually with because um, you were going more for a vernacular style right. of architecture and most of those do have a smooth finish you know to the um, for the siding at least that's been my experience I don't know you know um, and, and I think that's where we were leading that to Fortunately, I, am, I saw the same thing. So I made sure in my pictures, I took pictures of every kind of architecture. And so those pictures you see going through are all the way from the you know, kind of more Victorian to, I mean, I, I caught all the architectures. I, didn't, I purposely went and caught wood on the different kind of architectures to show that that wood, that wood grain is throughout. I mean, it's, it's not just dedicated to the house next door. It's just the house next door happens to be right next door, and you look at the two. Right, no, and I understand, but Go. that's, you know, one, one thing that I okay, noticed. Thank you. Anybody else have? Yeah, yeah the columns too. Well, I have more than I want to say, and I don't know if, uh, Anybody else wants to say something before I get into mine? Go for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he has some questions, questions on the columns too. Do we have some oh, I've got comments. a lot. Um, so, I, you know, I appreciate you being here. Um, what I find when I'm listening to you, and I appreciate what you've done um, and, and the product that you've created, uh, what I see is, um, you're reaching very far for excuses for what you have not done. You're looking for anything and everything to accommodate what you've done. There's conditions that were 
approved by the board that were set forth to you and you're creating kind of a convoluted scenario that it's the HRB's fault with the planning commission and the building department with the disconnect that somebody should have let you know that this was the case. These were conditions that were approved. I've been on this board off and on for a long time and I've never once approved this type of siding, Cedar Mill. I know exactly what it is and I know what smooth is. Um, you were given this, you were approved to do this building with smooth. It's a no brainer. Um, what I would have preferred to hear was um, some sort of humility into it of, hey, I screwed up, I saw this, I, I, I wanna make it right. I totally get the cost, but it's almost like you've completely ignored the conditions of approval. It's almost as if you have no regard for them, that you went through, you did whatever, you know, we weren't looking for turn columns, we were looking for larger columns that uh, your siders could have built on, on site. They didn't have to be turned, they were asked to be eight to 10 inches bigger. You were asked to do smooth siding, you didn't do it. Somebody ordered regular cedar mill and didn't think about it. You got smooth cedar, on, uh, smooth hardy shingles above, but you didn't do it here. I can't go through and say, yes, there are homes that have this in it. Granted, there's all different types of siding and I'm pretty sure not all of those were approved by the board or if it was, it was when it wasn't part of my tenure. So um, we have made accommodations for you to be here for a special <coughs> evening to deal with this. I know where you're at and how you wanna close on this, but it's really not our fault that we're here. We didn't cause this problem. None of us should even be here tonight. We shouldn't even be talking about this. But because of this, here we are. It wasn't because um, we were trying to be malicious. We weren't trying to tell you or dictate to you exactly what you're supposed to do, but we made conditions that in order to approve this, you as the builder and your architect were willing to do. So my, my soapbox is um, I don't have a lot of sympathy for your excuses that you're using. Um, and it doesn't make me comfortable to, to say that. Um, but what I guess I'm not seeing is any type of remorse or um, I wanna be the better steward. Great, you did this building, super. But to be a steward of the neighborhood and to be someone who is a builder and a developer that um, maybe your attention to detail should have been as good as ours because you were supposed to implement it. Now, this was caught, yes, for the CO. Um, and now we have to be here and, and look like the bad guys if we're gonna implement something. We could roll over and say, go ahead and keep it here because it's there and it does set precedence. And the precedence is a very tricky thing with this board because it does have impact down the road. Um, and so we have to be cautious of what we do. And yes, you know what? You found examples of different types of siding, but I really don't care. I'm, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is what's before us. And that's you with this building, with this issue. I'm not talking about anything else. I know you're trying to set precedent, but you should have set precedent by following the rules and doing what was supposed to happen. And that's with the siding and, and the columns. I, it's not for us to be the bad guys and say, look, man, it is what it is. You're asking us to accommodate you. Um, we are by being here tonight. And so, you know, it's hard for me to, to just be accommodating and have the attitude that I'm hearing that this is kind of our fault, it's the building department's fault, it's the neighborhood's fault because they've got everything else. And, you know, that's where I have a hard time. I, I totally get, I, I know what happened here. Um, Somebody ordered this cedar or this cedar mill because it's 95% of everything that's out there and it probably didn't get caught. It doesn't cost any different for smooth, um, but it got put up. You could have caught this. You could have said, whoa, wait a minute. This is supposed to be smooth. That's something that you should have known. Your architect could have passed that on to you or checked, but it's, I, I don't know that you can put the blame on the building department or, or the planning department. And I'm not trying to be grumpy or a grumpa, um, 
but I'm just trying to present to you, this is where I'm seeing it, and um, it, the onus shouldn't be on us. <laughs> We're just here to be representatives and, and to be accommodating to you. But, um, and you're, well, you're welcome to throw anything back at me, but, but that's where I'm at. I don't see a lot of... Um, I don't see a lot of remorse on this. It's, it seems like you're, you're passing the buck down the line. And that I don't really appreciate. Um, so that's, I'm trying to be as professional as I can um, when I say that. And I don't take lightly what I'm saying, or I'm not trying to be off the cuff. I'm just trying to be as respectful to you and to this board. So that's what I wanted to say. And you're welcome to say whatever you want regarding that. Thank you so much, John. So I, um, I sincerely believe that was heartfelt and it was fair. No, it's um, painful for me to have to say that, but that's my gut. And I, I understand. So, and, and I certainly want you to um, truly understand that I am, um, I'm, I may be passionate about this, but I'm not uncaring. And I even went up and spoke to Laura and said I would just go ahead and pull it off. And it was then through that dialogue that we talked about going ahead and having this, this meeting that we're gonna to try to get it. I haven't been um, of any attitude and I'm not trying to um, flip any responsibility one bit. I, I said four times in my um, um, dissertation that I wanna be a good steward. I gave upteen examples of my being a good steward and I was suggesting the ideas with the building department only to be helpful because I have I am a builder and I'm about process and I'm trying to think of ways that we could have a better process so these things don't happen. And when I see other new construction within the historic district with the textured siding, it would suggest that there could be a better process. I wasn't trying to flip responsibility. I'm well, tell me, tell me, what, what do you think happened with this siding? You tell me how this came to fruition. I, I can tell you exactly, sir. Um, we had a form filled out two and a half years ago and we were um, irresponsible and I'm so sorry that it ended up not being forefront on our um, desk. What became forefront was the plans. We, we believe the plans were reflective of our submittal because they typically are and the plans call for smooth siding in certain areas and certain areas it doesn't. We made a mistake. We're not, we're not here trying to suggest that we didn't make a mistake. We made a mistake. So why, why aren't you willing to fix it if you made a mistake? Because I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm just talking about you and this building. If you made a mistake, then in good conscience, are you, why wouldn't you just fix it? Well, because John, I'm a human being and, and I, have an, I have my own life and my own economy. I don't just have $12,000 to I'm with you. Off, off the side. So, so it, it's not out of some attitude that I'm not I'm just tearing it off and, and throwing it in the gutter and putting it back on again. It is because, number one, there's enough other examples of that product being used. The product looks just like the other wood as it matures. And it seems fair to at least be considered by you in light of the fact that it, it is pervasive within the historic area. Historically, nothing would have had wood texture on it. It would always been smooth. Typically, during this time, a lot of siding would have been out of fur, clear vertical grain fur, right. and it was smooth. And it is a vernacular building, it's a big building, but um, I, I see your side 100%, but I'm wanting you to know, I'm not speaking for everybody, but I'm just speaking for myself on the board that that's where I'm at and that's what I see. I There's nothing, I don't think you're being malicious, I don't think that at all. I think it was a mistake that, yes, should have been corrected, and you had conditions that were approved. That's why every time people come to the board and whether it's new construction or remodel or whatever, there's typically conditions that they have to follow. And part of the gig is that you agreeing to those conditions is that the, the city will come and inspect and make sure that you abided by those. Everybody has to do that. Right. And if they don't, then it has to be resolved. You can't just take lightly that ah, these conditions are here and I'll do some of them, but it doesn't make sense to do others, or I just forgot, or I made a mistake, because then it's like, what's the sense of what we're doing? You know, so I, but I get where you're at, and I'm not gonna keep going on it, but um, 
I don't think anything you did was malicious or with thank ill you. intent. Well, thank, thank you so much for that. No. And if I you, hope you didn't think, if you'd like to make a comment, you need to fill out a form and turn it into the planner. I'm not sure how that works. Sure. Right there. Um, so, so I, I see both sides of it. I totally do. But, but I, I wanted you to also he hear what I was saying. About, I heard it all. Well, let, me, let me finish. Up. About my sincere efforts to be a good steward. I, I wasn't here doing it with with attitude or laziness. I was I was believing no. I was following the plans, and where I saw a deviation from the plans, I was the first one up to the city saying, "I think I can do something nicer. I want to make sure I get your approval." I, I wasn't trying to not follow. I did make a mistake, but I don't think the mistake is one that justifies tearing it off when it is exemplary of what is out there. It, it was a mistake I made, and if it wasn't exemplary, then it would be standalone and, and it would already be taken off. But it is, it's common, and so I'm, I was looking for some grace, and I, I'm pleading. You're looking for grace. That, that's what I would prefer to hear from you is that, uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry that you didn't get that in my original takeoff because I'm a little bit nervous being up here in front of you. I was just trying to get out what I had on my, my heart, but by no means was it meant to be with any kind of assertiveness. No, man. I, I know where you're at, but I wanted you to let, me, let you know where I'm at. I don't, okay. I'm not speaking for everybody here. Maybe I am, and they're oh. the silent majority. I don't know. Um, I want to clear something up. Oh, when was oh, the mistake for... noticed? It was noticed after we had all of our inspections mm -hmm. and we were at final at final and, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was planning who noticed it, it right? was final final planning that caught the, the saw it and then we've been Christmas. trying to reconcile 415 and was it at that point you'd offered to take it down i think I that's what you said yes sir but um planning had said well why don't you go before the hrv to see if it would okay so at that point that's when you offered to right tear it down it, it was at that point, the, the, the sequencing was that um, it was recognized, it was um, something that I tried to work through, work out with planning. Planning again was being very sweet, they, they gave me a, a approval, but it was conditional on that until I had this meeting. And then I said, I can't wait for this meeting, I, I need to get this resolved. And they said, fine, we'll go ahead and give you the, the full non-conditional um, C of O, but um, in, in good um, statesmanship, you come here and see the historic district and present your case. So they didn't approve anything. They were just being nice to me. Okay. And when did the columns um, perfuffle? <laughs> that actually just came up today. Just today? Yeah. That was me seeing it today. I was looking right past the columns at the... <laughs> it was the first thing I saw. Um, does anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? I do not. Okay, thank you. You're thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we do have somebody who would like to speak. You've got three minutes. Uh, Jane Baird, if you'd, come, if you'd come forward and sit and state your name, please. Oh, gosh. When do you that nervous? <laughs> Let's see. Um, Jane Baird. Um, you have three minutes. Three minutes. Well, I'm the buyer of the building. And we started this process in March. Thought it was going to be completed in June. Um, and there were several project manager changes. I think we went through three. Um, so he's had a lot of change going on, as far as I could tell. And um, and may not have been able to have kept track of, I mean, he wasn't the, the go-to person originally. Um, and I like it. I'd rather not have the siding ripped off in the dead of winter with the rain and, um, and have the possibility, because I really want, we've already moved in. Um, it was gonna close in June and July and August, and they were busy with the Street of Dreams house and other projects and um, and um, I, I, some things just kind of got overlooked, I think. Um, the back porch got overlooked and then had to be put on, and that delayed things. Um, but I had people uh, 
tell me, oh, the remodeled house? They think it's an old house that's been remodeled. It looks pretty authentic. It, it fits in. I like it. I just don't want to end up with some sort of ongoing thing from rain and moisture and stuff that could end up coming back on me. I know, you know, he, they, they messed up and they know it. Um, but I don't feel a need. I went and looked when I found out it was like, oh, you got to rip the siding off? And so I went and I looked at the houses around there. The one right next door, I'm sure, is original siding. It looks just like mine. It's wavy and very three-dimensional. You can't tell the difference between them. I went and looked at the one that's across from his building, and it might be newer, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's from the 20s or 30s. It's a duplex, and the siding looks the same. Um, it looks dimensional. Um, I sell lumber, so I know the difference. Um, there's rough, and then there's smooth, and um, I'm, I can't say I've seen composite smooth, um, but typically what would have been put on back in the 30s and 40s would have been very thick cedar, because I have a rental, and it's, it's redwood or cedar. I think mine's redwood, and it's a good inch. They don't even cut wood that dimension anymore. Um, I would have preferred wood. I sell wood. I would have been happy to have supplied it, <laughs> you know? Um, and we can get cedar, but that's not what people use anymore. Um, and that was already decided that it was going to be composite. It was in the plans. And I didn't pay attention to if it was smooth or not. It looks smooth to me. It's not rough. The one next door does have raised grain coming off of its dimensional wood that's stuck in the paint. Um, so that's my two bits is I like it the way it is. <laughs> I don't want to have some sort of disaster that becomes, you know, an ongoing issue for me as an owner that, yeah, I inherit um, because Jane, we end thank up you. closing. Okay. Appreciate it. Um. You probably don't want to rebut that, do you? <laughs> no. Okay. And I, I apologize for not um, saying this at the beginning of the meeting, but there is a CIC meeting at yeah, 7 yeah. p.m. tonight. We see oh. the swarming. Yeah. Is that one more comment? Yes. You, just... um, you can fill it out after. Yeah. If you could state your name, I'll give you three minutes. Cameron McCready. I live on Washington Street. I'm a residential real estate broker and chair of the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association. Oh. I just want you all to know that um, I'm someone who cares about the neighborhood and historic preservation of, of buildings, whether they're on the registry or not. Uh, I know this is an ongoing issue we've been having. Um, we have several issues going on now. A couple of them will be before the HRB, hopefully soon. Um, and this is just one more case where you have a little bit of the slipping and the sliding that goes on. More of a let's do it and then apologize later. I know you're in a tough spot. Uh, I really don't know what decision you should make on this one. I'll leave that up to you. But uh, I bought a 1920 bungalow and uh, it's on the registry. It has a skirt made out of T111. Uh, it's rotting, so I decided to replace it. Now, I didn't look around and say, well, gee, everybody else has T111 siding, so therefore I get to do that. I, I didn't take that approach. I said, I'm going to do it right. And I went out and found myself some cedar laps, a clear, smooth cedar lap, um, not easy to find and very expensive. But that's what I'm doing to, to, uh, to honor the um, district. And I just want to make sure you all know that there's a lot of us out there who really care about what you do. You have an important role to play, and I thank you for it. Thank you. Did you want to make a rebuttal to that? I, I would, sir, please. Yeah. You have at maximum five minutes for a rebuttal. I'll, I'll take 30 seconds. Um, the, um, 
The front door change that I made, it was complete evidence that nothing of which he described am I. Um, I, I took a, a thousand dollar door and put a five thousand dollar door there because I was trying to do something that truly was going to look nice in the neighborhood. Okay. It was reflective of the architecture that I was um, emulating. And so in no way was I someone trying to slip shot, look for some kind of an excuse. I was trying to follow my plans. My plans called for smooth siding. Where it called for them, I put smooth siding. Where it didn't, I, I didn't. And yes, I made a mistake in not going back and checking my file. I made a mistake. But in no sense, in no way, was I someone trying to um, make excuses and, la and do something and ask for forgiveness. That's not who I am, and that's not even remotely representative of what I was doing. I was trying to do the very best I could, and I was up at the planning department. Anytime I felt like I needed to get their approval, there's a window that's missing from what on the original plans because it didn't work. I was there like you know five times making sure historic review was okay with my taking out a window that would have had a, um, a electrical panel too close to it. I mean, I, I care, and I really was caring in what I did. And so that's not representative of me or anything about me and what I was trying to do. Thank you. going to close the public hearing and leave it to the board to debate and have if the board has any questions for staff during this time no questions for I staff. guess my well I'm not for staff I just, just comment, or so. just okay. anybody can give their you know here's your chance all of us my comment would be is if we have conditions that we set, and whether through neglect or um, forgetfulness or whatever, um, what is our, if and they do something that's not correct and they, we allow them to do it, what, what is our um, mission? What is our, um, that's our job if, if they're not going to follow what we have um, set forth as conditions. And we have had a few others in the past. They probably weren't as much financially, but like where they built a uh, railing wrong, we've made them, you know, take it out and put back what was. Um, what was um, listed in the conditions. So um, that's basically, you know, why are we here if if they're not following the, um, and it does set up that precedent. Mm -hmm. I guess that's my bottom line. Mm -hmm. I've got a few things. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I guess when considering a question like this, I feel like this is one of the most difficult things that we have to do because it's such a subjective issue. Um, and so I you know, really don't want it to be subjective so that we're not creating a precedent, not just for the siding, but and how we deal with deviations in general. Mm. Um, and so I, I kind of thought about three things and those three are really, one, what's the impact uh, to the historic district and to the structure? Two, what's the impact of the remedy? And then three, kind of what were the circumstances around the deviation in the first place? So, and that's kind of in order of importance. Um, as far as the impact um, to the historic district and to the structure, uh, there's no question in my mind that smooth siding is correct. Uh, I don't find the examples of other Hardy Plank or other homeowners that went without following the process uh, and just put Hardy Plank on there that's textured to be compelling. Um, it should be, you know, as a professional builder that has a lot of work in this area, I would expect the best from you and the, and the most compliance rather than um, kind of the, you know, missing things. That being said, uh, from a distance, I don't think that many people would notice uh, and it's not, a severe impact to um, 
to the building and it's, it's not a contributing structure, it's a new construction building. Um, second, as far as things to remedy compared to a railing, I feel like the cost is relatively higher here uh, and has some other potential impact to the building as far as potential moisture damage or anything like that. So uh, there's a lot of impact both financially, uh, in time, there's some risk and uh, also some you know, environmentally unfriendly uh, just in scrapping the old materials and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, circumstances around the deviation, uh, you know, the process was followed generally. It wasn't someone that replaced the siding without submitting an application at all. Um, I share a lot of John's uh, personal feelings about, um, you know, there, there were really only five conditions of approval here, so to see that you missed Two, you know, two out of five, and you know, 60% is not such great uh, uh, standard for a professional. But um, I want to leave that out of my, you know, decision and make it as objective as possible. So my opinion is to uh, allow the deviation and approve the application. Um, not setting a precedent that textured siding is equal to smooth, um, but that the impact of this um, non-conformance is, is minimal enough that it doesn't justify the, the cost. Awesome, thank you. Did you have anything? Yeah, um, I agree with what Grant said. I think that was very well stated. Um, I would like to point out one additional thing relating to the building that we're sitting in right now. It has at least two deviations, one involving the siding as you stated and the other involving the windows. If the city is going to grant itself, cut itself the slack, I don't see how we can tell a citizen that we're going to force them to to change it. Honestly, I think we have to let them keep it. Okay. Everybody said what they wanted to and say. And we're all talking just about the siding, not about the columns, we correct? The, columns, yeah. the, you the columns aren't part of the application. I'm sorry? The columns are not part of the application. Of uh, this application so right. it to be something right. that we have to so address. So at this point, the because of public notice. applicant will need to correct the column situation or we need to have another meeting yeah. that's yeah. publicly noticed to talk about the columns. Okay. okay. Anything else? No? Would anybody want to entertain a motion? Okay, um, well, I'll move to approve uh, PC 19146 HR 1907 for an alteration to previously approved new construction in the Claflin District at 415 Center Street. Is there a second? I will second. Can we have a vote, please? Uh, board Member Met? Nay. Board Member Stovey? Nay. Board Member Basinger? Aye. Board Member Blythe. Aye. Chair McLaughlin. Dang it, you people. <laughs> <sighs> you guys. It can be appealed. Guys are killing me. Uh, this would have been a lot of. Uh... It's killing me. Um...
Nee. Was für Bells? Okay. Would someone like to entertain another motion, please? No, why, why do we need another motion? So the motion failed. Uh, the yeah. motion to approve oh, I got, the I got. application failed. If someone would like to entertain a motion that may have a different condition or something else. Timing would be a good. Yeah, I would, I would move that we allow this to be done sometime after okay. the winter is over, like sometime after June. After give them a year, first. a year to do it. Give them a year, yeah. Yeah, that'll be my motion to, to grant okay. a year to comply. Would someone like to second that? I will. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can we put that to a vote, please? Okay. Uh, board Member Stoby? Yeah. Uh, board Member Blank? Aye. Uh, board Member Met? Aye. Board Member Basinger? Aye. And Chair McLaughlin? Aye. We are adjourned. Right, we need to get out of here. Yeah.